the blood clot the blood clot is also called thrombus is also called scab a blood clot is called thrombus or scab embolus a blood clot inside blood vessels occasionally you can see generally when blood clots are formed inside blood vessels they are removed by your immune system they will remove it but under certain conditions you can see a free floating blood clot inside the blood vessels it is called as embolus now as long as the blood is clotting inside the blood vessels there is no blood clotting that's because we have got anticoagulants being released anticoagulants coagulation means clotting anticoagulant means substances which prevent blood clotting like hemolysin anticoagulant present inside the saliva of mosquitoes a female mosquitoes they suck blood piercing and sucking type of mouth parts are present so to prevent that blood from clotting at the time of that sucking the female mosquito releases hemolysin hirudin it is an anticoagulant produced inside the saliva of leeches anticoagulant present inside the saliva of leeches is called as hirudin in human being there is heparin anticoagulant present inside the blood which is released by mast cells and basophils in blood it is basophils in connective tissue mast cells and mast cells mostly inside the liver we call it heparin because hepatic it comes from liver mostly but it is actually produced by mast cells only in that case so heparin as long as heparin is produced there is no blood clotting inside inside the blood vessels now how is heparin working heparin it increases the activity of antithrombin increases antithrombin activity when i say antithrombin activity means there is a substance which acts opposite to thrombin so it is called antithrombin it increases antithrombin activity so when i say antithrombin it is a substance which goes and binds with thrombin so that thrombin is not working when there is no thrombin no conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin and there is no blood clotting so it, this is acting by increasing the activity of antithrombin heparin but then we also have something called as coumarin coumarin it is of plant this substance is is of plant origin from this we get dicoumarol dicoumarol and warfarin initially dicoumarol was synthesized and later warfarin was synthesized warfarin brand name is coumarin this is the first substance and this is the later substance which is produced from coumarin coumarin is obtained from plants coumarin by itself is not having any anti coagulant property but coumarin coumarol dicoumarol warfarin these are all anti coagulants warfarin was once used as rat poison also now the activity of these substances they are antagonistic to vitamin k warfarin dicoumarol these substances are antagonistic to vitamin k antagonistic it acts opposite to vitamin k now factor number 2 7 
10. These factors, they are synthesized inside liver, inside the liver and all of them requires vitamin K. Factor number 2, 7, 9, 10, blood clotting factors, they are synthesized inside liver and for their production vitamin K is required. Now, when you take warfarin, these substances, these vitamin K is so this, this is acting opposite to vitamin K. So these blood clotting factors are not synthesized. So there is no blood clotting. So coumarin, huh? from coumarin is of plant origin. From that warfarin or coumarin is produced. That, that is the synthetic product from this. So that is acting opposite to vitamin K. Heparin is acting opposite to thrombin. And uh, oxalates, citrates and EDTA. Now in vitro, outside the body, when we collect the blood outside the body, in blood banks, so to prevent blood clotting, uh, we generally add oxalate, citrates and EDTA. So when these substances are added, they deposit calcium, sodium, ammonium, potassium, oxalates and citrates. So when these are added, calcium deposit, when oxalate is added, calcium removed as calcium oxalate. When citrates are added, calcium removed as calcium citrate. In whichever form you take it, whether you take it in ammonia or potassium or, uh, or uh, so sodium, ammonium or potassium oxalates and uh, citrates. So they remove calcium and calcium is vital for both intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathways. And once calcium is removed, the blood can be stored for considerable period of time. Maybe some 30 to 40 days you can store it. Hmm? EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraestic acid, EDTA is also used for the same purpose.